looking okay. back in my tiny note chart, um, if you look in the Dobbs Quadrant, you have um, a statement, all four plus stages of apprehension. So that meant all four previous quadrants, the LaRouche, McLuhan, Thompson, Kroger Quadrant, plus the um, stages of apprehension um, that each represented, plus more. Uh, and apprehension can be uh, the uh, getting nervous, but also can mean understanding. So the, um, the definition of art as a retracing of a moment, the quiddity of a moment, is um, what McLuhan uses in 1953. He uses that definition for a great art like Finnegan's Wake or Ulysses. And um, I always considered that my chart is a picture and then becomes multimedia, but visually it's a picture of the Android meme. And we're in the stages of apprehension acted out by the Android meme. We're in the second phase where we're watching the machines extend themselves the machinic extension of itself, and it eventually, say from 1990 till lately, uh, the Android meme was engaging in the act of repenting. It was reviewing uh, all that happened analogically in the analog media, and then it eventually uh, reviews itself, and that would be maybe in Web 2.0. So. Um, this metanoia process is acted out by the Android meme right in front of us. That's why most um, human attempts at wisdom today are, are really weak because anything that you could say is being done and replayed and repented by the Android meme. All kinds of uh, uh, excellent forms of uh, lucid thinking are happening around us as an environment. So that really uh, uh, frustrates people. Some of the postmoderners call it the um, colonization of uh, the imagination, human imagination. But I think it's even more complex than that. Uh, it's the uh, various uh, glorified forms of knowing in our, uh, in our various um, teaching, oral and visual space traditions that are being acted out, including the kinetic and dance uh, theater arts. So, uh, in, in face of this comprehensive replay by the Android meme, this massive repentance by the Android meme, um, human expression uh, really uh, is at loose ends unless it sees sees how to see through this. So, when when William Aaron Thompson um, writes his books, he's putting on visual space, the Gutenberg galaxy. So he makes a linear. Uh, replay of the stages of evolution, cultural, biological, spiritual, uh, intellectual, and his replay is, uh, is uh, fun to read and it's quite comprehensive. It includes more, more dynamics of pre-literate society than McLuhan did. Uh, Thompson includes the shamanic and trancing and, and uh, experiences like that, sees them in the first phase of uh, human culture. and. Uh, McLuhan would have included that, but he never stated it and didn't develop it. And Thompson has a, uh, an essay on um, how death was imaged through these various historical phases. So all these historical phases are, are implied in my chart. You will see um, at the top of the Tino chart, you'll see several references to Thompson's uh, work. Uh, one has this sequence prokaryotic cells, anaerobic bacteria, cyanobacteria, then eukaryotic cells, and then acacia. I also have another string, elementals, goblins, fairies, humans, and angels. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, that's, that's the Thompson part. Uh, he does refer to black holes and white dwarfs. You might refer to um, the boson and graviton and wormholes, uh, but I have them either in the LaRouche quadrant or in uh, the Coca quadrant. Let's see. So, and also uh, the Thompson thing refers to, if you look at the uh, second column from the left, under the name, the name of uh, 
of the the book there's always a there's a novel in each quadrant so in the LaRouche novel you have you have um, Catch-22 Joseph Heller's Catch-22 and then you have um, in the McLuhan The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test by Tom Wolfe uh, in the Thompson Quadrant, you have Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon. In the Coker Quadrant, you have um, the Illuminati's Trilogy by Robert Anton Wilson. And then uh, in the Fifth Quadrant, you have Harlot's Ghost Part Two, which um, never showed up as that. He switched and made a different book. Norman Mailer made a different book. Uh, in his final book, forget the title right now. It's about um, it's about Lucifer. Maybe it's something to do with Castle. I can look that up. So, underneath each novel, I have, um, in the LaRouche Quadrant, the mental body, in the McLuhan Quadrant, the causal body, the Thompson Quadrant, the etheric body, Coker Quadrant, the astral body, and under, in the Dobbs Quadrant, the physical body. So these are terms from theosophy, which um, William Aaron Thompson is familiar with, he, he actually prefers the Rudolf Steiner anthroposophy to the, to the theosophy. So that's a reference to uh, Thompson's categories in the uh, action of repentance that's laid out in the Android meme chart. And also I have paranoia. I, have, uh, I don't have metanoia. I don't have that word, but that's implied. I've got my stages are paranoia, schizophrenia, hysteria, panic, and ecstasy. So I usually don't get a chance to talk about the Thompson aspects of, uh, of the tiny note chart. So I welcome this opportunity. I'm glad you're reading Thompson and inspired by it. Um, I mean, he definitely comes after McLuhan. He uses McLuhan's media knowledge, but he, he relates it to a lot of the phenomena that the me decade of the 70s uh, got involved in. A lot of rabbit holes that people uh, culturally, um, we're attracted to do after the um, origins of the chemical body in the 60s. Yes, I, I like a lot what you said about the jazz, the, met the metaphor of... The yes, he, uh, Thompson makes a very original statement about uh, economics. And in one of his later books, he talks about how jazz in the 30s actually um, was an art form mirroring what economics had to do. When you had the GI, GI Bill after World War II, you had the Breton Woods um, set up in 1944. You, um, it was a self-organizing chaosmus aspect of jazz was what the economy was moving into. Um, this is uh, spelled out in detail in McLuhan's op-ed of uh, September 21st, 1974 in the New York Times uh, called A Media Approach to Inflation. But Thompson is unique in that he shows how the arts, like jazz as it was developed as an original art form in the United States um, in the 20s, 30s and 40s, he shows how it was a, um, a model for how um, people would have to live in the economy after World War II. Um, that's certainly a connection. You like the connections I make. That's a really great one that Thompson makes um, to show how the pop arts, uh, no, the um, popular arts, innovations in, in what's called lowbrow art actually have a highbrow function uh, as a metaphor and a, guide, a guidance in how to... Uh, live within the increasingly uh, exter externalized mind jazz of the android me. Uh, definitely my tiny note chart is meant to be responded via mind jazz, but then I would, I would add the, um, the five bodies uh, to what Thompson's saying. And that comes to the phrase, um, the millennial ecstatics of five-bodied expression. Thompson is, ex is extent is in his mind jazz and the use of jazz, the metaphor of jazz in the 30s and 40s, that's about the chemical body's response and moving out of visual space into musical tonalities as the ground of our society 
It's McLuhan said simply, "We today we live entirely by music." So Thompson developed that. Um, but it's more with the uh, chemical body, with a little bit of astral body uh, knowledge uh, leaking in in his writings. But um, we're watching the jazz of the TV body and the chip body and the um, mystery body added to the jazz of the mind body or chemical body and the astral body. Um, you know, the it's interesting how... Um, the Android, meme, the Android meme builds on LaRouche McLuhan and Thompson and Coker, which are actually the radio environment, LaRouche, the TV environment and its changes. Uh, McLuhan, Thompson's a computer environment, its changes. And then the fiber optics or satellite or advanced chip technology uh, is a Coker quadrant. And then I bring in the mystery, mystery body. Um, you need to have these five bodies to express what's happening now. Uh, you, I, you, I take their categories and show the repentance is now expressed through the millennial ecstatics of uh, each one of those body categories. So it's actually way, way beyond what um, the four quadrants say. And that's what I'm trying to show and, and most people recognize today is way beyond any form of models of knowing uh, in the end of our meme. They just don't know how to know that. They don't know how to get a, a, a repentant strategy on it. They don't know how to get a metanoia of what's happening today. Yes, but in what you read, maybe you could read it again. Okay. It says, uh, it talks about the noise and, and you say all the bodies are dancing to the to the jazz of the Finnegan's Wake. Yes. Like we're dancing with all the bodies, not only with the physical, because I think the fallen state concentrates only on the outer kingdom and the physical body. That's right. It's, it's um, so this is a, a book, Imaginary Landscape, came out in 1989 by Thompson. And on page 69 he says, and, you know, people talk about having knowing. He says, there seems to be a cycle to knowing in the manner in which various subcultures interact within the culture. And I would add, various bodies interact within the android meme. But he writes, the general level of accepted reality or normalcy can be called news. And that's italicized as N-O-U-S. Then, as news moves through the space and time of a culture, it decays into noise, N-O-I-S-E. And that's italicized. As noise accumulates, it generates an information overload and an epistemological disorientation that stimulates paranoia. And he has that italicized. These paranoid caricatures of pattern recognition, remember McLuhan said the third Copernican revolution starting 100 years ago with the vortices was pattern recognition. Uh, and then he said in the 70s the uh, android, well, the electronic environment was creating a a realm of pattern recognition addiction. People were becoming addicted to pattern recognition. So Thompson saying these paranoid caricatures of pattern recognition, however, are of interest to the artist, the cultural historian, or the philosopher, and can serve as data for descriptions of changes of state in the culture at large. So paranoia becomes data for the next level up in metanoia, M-E-T-A-N-O-I-A, italicized. He says metanoia, if favored by the circumstances of history, and in my case, in the circumstances of the replay by the android me, this metanoia can become the new condition of normalcy, and thus metanoia stabilizes itself as noose, N-O-U-S, and the cycle keeps on turning as this noose decays into noise. And then he says, from the point of view of Egypt, Moses was a paranoid, but from the point of view, but, but from the point of view of Israel, Moses was a metanoid. From the point of view of the Catholic Church, Descartes was a paranoid suffering from weird dreams and delusions of grandeur that alienated him from the common reality of the time. But from the point of view of the newly emergent worldview of science, Descartes was a metanoid who helped to effect a change in state of our civilization and thus create a new definition of new, N-O-U-S. Now, of course, science has been so thoroughly routinized that new has decayed into noise. And that's right, science is uh, in a state of noise at this point. And we are once again, I note this, and we are once again awash with paranoias of innumerable varieties from Jose Gar Arguelles to Lyndon LaRouche. And so the wheel of knowledge keeps on spinning. New becomes noise, becomes paranoia, becomes metanoia, which becomes new, becomes noise, becomes paranoia, becomes metanoia. So, 
I would say that to Thompson, Coker, McLuhan, and LaRouche, Bob Dodd seems to be a paranoid. <laughs> no, a quadrophenic metanoia is uh, our sickness. No, no. Not yet. No, I'm a paranoid. And then, uh, once we get into Iondom, the hexatic level, then Bob Dobbs, respectively, his form of repentance becomes marvelous quadrophenic metanoia. And I will be celebrated accordingly. And McLuhan, Thompson, Coker, and LaRouche will just be mere footnotes in the annals of mind jazz. But uh, as you were reading this, I was thinking how art portrays in many ways the environment. Like uh, music became noise too, became ab abstract and very complex. And Yeah, uh, that, that, that's with uh, uh, Varese and uh, Weber and Cage, would you say? Who else would you add Yes, and then electronic music, electroacoustic music, collage, installations. So it, um, they were portraying this, uh, the noise in the environment, too much information, too much everything, the Finnegan's Wake effect. And then you have to come in, make this uh, review of history, because, uh, as uh, Irving says, we we're not looking for solution of a problem. The thing is so complex now that we have to make this revision to to make a metanoia and change, go beyond, and uh, this. Uh, you, what we're doing is dancing with the all the bodies to this new to this new jazz. And Ion says, you are then making the new song, when the we find song. coherence again. Yeah, and, um, you know, the, the previous quadrants look for solutions. Um, as you've pointed out, no one has brought along the physical as a speaking uh, environment to enhance what they're claiming. So here I have brought in non-physical to speak and join in and help create the new song. And... Um, uh, that's what's new, and also we we take the products from the, from the new song, like the I cell, and you don't have to uh, search through traditional means of knowing to get to a, a metanoia. The metanoia now uh, can be eaten, and that's the new part we offer. We not only offer intellectual scenarios, we offer uh, gustatory and uh, uh, digestible scenarios. And uh, that's new. That completes a lot of the previous uh, quadrants. Um, it's because to to reach all the bodies is not enough with um, knowledge or information. It has to. There has to be another type of like chemistry. Yes. Uh, the um, who just it's interesting. Stockhausen. You know, we, we have uh, McLuhan talking about electronic music in the late 60s, and he's saying, you know, music is moving into the abstract, like uh, painting did, ballet, uh, ballet and dance did it too, sculpture. Um, but the electronic music is responding to the uh, TV landscape. And is there any music that you know of, any composer that's responding to the chip landscape? Well, there are many composers uh, using, for example, big data patterns that they somehow try to transform into a composition. Like uh, they they make this correspondence or synesthesia of information that will be transformed in sound or and there been experimenting with uh, this type of um, translations of information. So There's I, no no particular figure stands out, other, may, other than maybe Frank Zappa? Yes, I think uh, Frank Zappa is the best because he he's communicating at all levels, like uh, he doesn't he cannot be classified as high or low culture. He really does this uh, fusion yeah. of all genres. 
Yeah, he cannot be classified as high or low electronic music. Right. Um, uh, what, like have you ever... The, uh, have, uh, Germans make oops. the difference between... Hey, go un, ahead. Uh, Germans make the difference between Unterhaltung Musik and Ernst Musik. U Musik and E Musik. And yeah, you cannot limit Frank Zappa to one or, or the other. Have you ever heard of Glenn Gould, G-O-U-L-D? Yes, but um, I'm not... You don't see... Did you know that he started doing TV documentaries as part of his composition? No, but I can see how that could happen because I was also somehow interesting, interested in doing multimedia. It's like, uh, I think many, many people, because of the technology we have, it's, it's easy to interconnect the visuals or light or other types of uh, perceptory stimulation. <laughs> right, now Thompson, uh, because what is outstanding in what we present is that we bring in the new song created by um, Eindom, or non-physical coming forth to create. And that's unprecedented uh, in all previous knowledge systems or attempts to repent, to review one's life. Um, and um, so that's why I can say, you know, nobody's composing or sculpting or painting or singing the way uh, Carol and I are because of uh, we've got ion. 